the first question was if the uh, if the volatility of the stock market dec decreases or the volatility of the stock uh, decreases what happens to the put now there are a couple of thoughts that you immediately do whenever you see questions like this whenever you think of an option you should think of the option as well as the underlying so let's say you have a call or a put option so this will have the share which is general this option is on a share of general electric there'll be a maturity date there'll be a strike price say 25 and then the underlying will be let's say a stock now if the underlying becomes more volatile does the price or value of this option become more or less it becomes more what if this were a put option so if this is a put option so whether the option is a put or a call if the underlying becomes more volatile the price goes up okay so that's simple the next question was if the strike price increases the what will happen to the value of the put the way you think of this is as follows let's say let's say you have two put options uh, so these are both puts they are similar in all respects so they have the same underlying let's say shares of general electric and the only difference between these two is that one has a strike of 25 the other has a strike of 20 which one is more valuable right. the right to sell for 25 is more valuable than the right to sell for 20 so this will have a higher value okay the next one is if the price of the underlying stock decreases then what happens to the value of a put or a call so think of it this way again you have a option let's say this is a put option and you have underlying stock which is GE when the price of GE goes down let's say that this has a strike of 25 if the price of the GE, GE stock was initially 25 and then it went down to 20 is that good for the holder of the put yes. so when price goes down to say 20 the right to sell for 25 is more valuable so that would be good what if this were a call so when you have a call option and the underlying goes down then the right to s what is this right now this is the right to buy the right to buy for 25 is less valuable if the underlying price is going down okay next was if time to maturity increases so again let's say that you have two options which are similar in all respects so again let's say take two call options so they are both call options and they are on the same underlying this has 0.5 years to maturity and this has 0.1 years to maturity which option will be worth more obviously the one that has more time to maturity is worth more what if instead of call we were talking about puts so then also it would be the same the option with more time to maturity would be worth more okay next one was interest rate which is the trickiest okay so now this just I'll, I'll explain this very briefly for a call option if you get it great if you don't get it then don't worry too much the point is that if interest rates go up the value of a call option goes up and the value of a put option goes down okay now this is not overly intuitive but the idea is this if you have say ten thousand dollars to invest and you you are you think that the shares of general electric will go up okay one way of benefiting is to put the entire ten thousand dollars in this share the other option is to literally buy a call spend a thousand dollars on it instead of ten thousand dollars and invest nine thousand at the risk-free rate okay so the point is you are still benefiting from the stock going up but investing less money the rest of the money you are putting in the risk-free rate so the call option makes it possible for you to put less money in the option or or expose uh, the exposure to the stock is the same with less money but you can then put money at the risk-free rate does this so if the risk-free rate goes up 
is, is this strategy more valuable? Yes. It makes this strategy more valuable and hence the call option more valuable. The put is a little harder to think about, so just remember at this stage that the put is going to opposite. But I'm just telling you to remember. Okay, now you've learned it. Okay, that's your benefit. In the, in the long run, marks don't matter. What matters is what you're learning. Okay, so next, yeah. That is, that is, that is, that is all absolutely right. The only one word that I could take away from your long explanation is we could simply, because this was not that simple. <laughs> Maybe for you, but, but in general, what you said was all correct. Okay, perhaps not simple, but it was all correct. Exactly. You could also conceptually think about it through the put call, but uh, I just gave you a, what was an attempt at a slightly more intuitive explanation, but both of you, uh, what you said was correct. Theoretically, Haneen's comment was more correct, put call parity, uh, may put call parity is a slightly more complex, as in there are other things going on there too. But anyway, okay. you're right. Okay, what's next? Now, the next set of questions was on maximum profit, maximum loss. Okay, and the best way to do these was to just draw the diagrams. So if you have a put, uh, a long put or a short put, what is the maximum loss for a long put? I'll tell you how to, the, the fastest way to do this is to, uh, is to first draw the, what's this that I've drawn over here? So this is a long put. So what is the short put? So this is the short put. What's the profit diagram for the short put? The profit diagram for the short put is like that. What's this, this price over here? That's the strike price. What's this? That's also strike. Okay, what's this distance? That's, let's say P is the, is the how much you pay for the put option, the price of the put option. So that is P. So what is this distance? This is P, the pr how much you pay for the put option. So what is the maximum loss for a short put? So this is the profit diagram for a short put. This represents the maximum loss for the short put. So the max, the maximum loss for the short put is X minus P. When does the short put have the most loss? The short put has the most loss when stock price comes down to zero. to zero. So this amount is the maximum loss for the short put. Okay. What about uh, what is the maximum loss for a short call? So 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 if I give you so you see so max loss for a short the way you the way you do this is. Okay, I'll tell you how I, I structure this because it's, I don't just remember this, I just quickly derive it. So the way you do this, or at least the way I do this, is I quickly draw the long call. What I do is I think long and then just take the mirror image for the yes. short. So what is this? This picture is the payoff for the short call. Then from this I can quickly get the profit. What's the profit for the short call? So it is this. So this is the profit for the short call. So what is the maximum loss? It's unlimited. What's the maximum gain? Who are we plotting over here? So the maximum loss for the short call is unlimited because if the stock price keeps going up, the losses keep mounting. Okay, whoa, whoa. Okay, anyway, we are talking about the short call right now. Short put, we'll get back to later. Okay, so are you with me? What's the maximum loss for a long call? Long call. This is the profit diagram. This is the profit for a long call. So the maximum loss is the is this. Okay, the next is what is the what is the break even point? So what is the break even point? It's quiet. Okay, over there. Kinza. Quiet, quiet. So Kinza, what's the break even point for long call? So break even point is strike price. So minus the option price, it's plus. So for so that's the break even point. It's the X plus the option price. Is the break even point for the long call the same as the break even point for the short call? Why not? It's the same. 
whether you are long or short the break even for the long and the short call the break even is the same because if you are okay so is everybody clear on that okay so anyway so that is the explanation over here we are done for now